Let's spend the day at Holiday Park in Germany, which is home to one of the highest rated and most revered roller coasters in all of Europe, Expedition G-Force. We'll also be riding an awesome horror themed launch coaster, a fierce freefall tower with wonderful views and getting confused by ghost cues. Want to find out more? Come and join me down at Holiday Park. Guten Morgen from Holiday Park here in Germany. This is obviously notorious for a certain roller coaster called Expedition G-Force, which has been one of Europe's kind of top rated roller coasters for so long, about 25 plus years or whenever it was it opened. Huge, intimate mega coaster. It draws a lot of comparisons to Millennium Force, which may be a giga, but is also one of my favorite roller coasters. So really excited to ride that. There's also a giant intimate drop tower behind me. There is a premier uh, Skyrocket 2, which looks to be the best themed version of that ride there is in the world. So really excited to go and explore. We've got a Halloween event going on as well. So lots to do here today at Holiday Park. Well, inside the main entrance plaza here, already excited to see they have a Dunkin' Donuts, but you may notice a few similar ride names to a certain Plops Land of Pan, and that is because this is a Plopsa Park. So this drop tower is called Anubis, and there's a Heidi Holiday Indoor section over there. I do like the, uh, the aesthetics here. The buildings are all looking really nice. Hey, good first impression so far. So we are going to go and head in the direction of Expedition G-Force first. You can see it peeking through the trees there. Well, we are about to start our expedition. It apparently only has a one minute queue, which will be perfect for re-rides. So really, really excited to go and ride this Intamin mega coaster. Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to my crib. had two rides on Expedition G-Force, currently waiting for the back row for our third. And it's been a really interesting morning so far. Some very odd things have been happening. So first of all, we'll talk about the ride, which is fantastic. It does everything that it's sort of advertised to do. Some great airtime, an incredible head chopper halfway through, some really nice S-bends and some sort of forceful uh, turns as well. But I want to talk about the operations, which have been some of the worst I've seen, I think. It's, it's very slow loading here. There's a three-step process where you have to have a visual check of your, of your seat belt, then the one of the two ride-ups, and I've got two ride-ups here, two ride-ups, one train. Um, then I have to go back to the cabin, tell you to put down your lap bar, then they come do, do, do a check of the lap bar. So this batch is around every two and a half minutes, and then obviously you've got um, the, the length of the, of the ride experience as well. So trains are going out every sort of four to five minutes, which is slow. However, something very odd happened on our first ride, which is we were queuing up, there was a queue of probably around 100 people behind us. We went on the ride, and then when we came back, the entire queue had gone. They just vanished, like ghosts. And we are so confused, it's slightly broken our heads a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it is technically scare season, but... So, they may have been actual ghosts. So, let me know in the comments, do Holiday Park have ghosts that just join queues and disappear? Because we're both just... Anyway, we're gonna go for the back row now. Wanna come and join me?
holiday park doing a bit of a Merlin with all their shipping containers. And here you can see all the various awards that Exhibition G-Force has won over the years. The last one sadly was 2014, so it's been 10 years since it got recognised. Of course the coastal world has moved on dramatically since then, but a very decorated coaster. Uh, unfortunately, the decorations are on the side of a shipping container. I mean, you could sell your headline coaster a little bit better Holiday Park if you wanted to. I mean, if you went to Vegas and you saw this, you'd be a little underwhelmed. Well, it's been a morning of taking expeditions to G-Force. And it's been a good, good roller coaster. I think at the back there, the airtime was very fierce. Fierce to the point where it was actually a little uncomfortable on the thighs, I would say. And as much as I enjoyed it, I don't think I could keep lapping the back row. But we'll probably go back and do a few more rides later on, uh, especially after that weird ghost queue incident earlier, which has rendered the line fairly quiet. But we've just had a bite to eat, uh, pulled pork roll and chips and a drink for 15 euros, which is not too bad. We're now heading towards the back of the park where we have another fairly meaty roller coaster here it's a premier skyrocket 2 however this has some really cool horror theming which looks really interesting so we're walking that direction we may hear a few things on the way if we come across anything cool um i'll let you know oh this is all quite nice around here isn't it viking vibes very similar to plopsaland japan got a disco obviously you don't see them anywhere else so very unique and we've got some more G-Force coming around as well, I think. Well, the theming has certainly stepped up a notch around here. This is much nicer. Sorry, which German park am I at again? Well, I got excited there and thought we had another coaster that I didn't know about, but it's just a piece of old corkscrew. Oh, Alton Towers? It is. It's like we've been at Alton Towers and Fantasyland in the last five minutes. However, look at the theming for Skyscreen. This is their Premier Skyrocket 2. Zombie themed, as I understand it. And these are really good fun. They don't have the most comfortable trains, but they are super intense. And it's going to be Joe's first ride. Are you looking forward to a Skyrocket? This is the first time in the ride where I really want to ride one of these for quite a fair while, so I'm very excited. But as you said, it looks really well themed. And the zombie theme is a win-win anyway. It's horror themed, so yeah, happy days. Cool. Well, this is how you theme a Skyrocket. So then we're going to queue for Skyscream. So you actually have to be at least 14 to ride this, so I think we're okay. Hi, I'm Gary Basildon and you should like this video. Oh, that looks like the dog from the fly too. Well, that is how you do a Skyrocket 2. Not only is the theming wonderful, I mean, a proper horror queue line with lots of interactive elements. Clearly, at some points, they have scare actors in there too because there is space for them. But also, you may have noticed 
no comfort collars on that ride. So it's just pure lap bars and the sort of the ankle restraints, which makes it a much more comfortable experience. The trains are still a little on the tight side. When you're wandering through to put your bags in, you do kind of have to shuffle through awkwardly in a sort of sideways crab-like motion. But otherwise, that's really good. Really intense launches, some bonkers airtime in place, especially at the back as you drop off that second hill. Whew, you're out of your seat the whole way down. So yeah, these, these are really fun. They get me a bad reputation as if they're sort of, uh, I guess they're, they're off the shelf. They're not like some cool custom coaster, but they deliver on a very small footprint. And that's something that can benefit a lot of parks. And here you see the construction zone for 100% Wolf, which to me seems like an unrealistic target. Uh, this will be a Gertzlauer family coaster arriving at Holiday Park in 2026. So let me know down below, are you excited for this? And what percent Wolf are you? Well, it looks like the lighthouse tower is up next for a bit of wind-seeking action. I've got a feeling there will be some wind to seek up there too, because it's a bit of a mixed bag of a day weather-wise. Fancy joining me up there? Well, we successfully seeked some wind and certainly got some wind up there. It was quite nippy to be fair. Also got some really good views of the park. And from there you can see just how small this park is. It's a very uh, small footprint. So give them credit for what they've done here. You can also look down on the 100% wolf construction site and it is literally pure foliage. So they've got a lot of work to do before they can clear that and start constructing a roller coaster. So just hanging out around this beach area around here it's um it's quite nice oh, i got quite a funky little beach bar down here as well so up next we're going to go break some waves on beach rescue I mean, at best, that looks to be about 40% wolf. Definitely more cartoon dog vibes. Shall we? That went horribly. So we're back here in Wiki 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 land to check out some of the rides here. It's obviously very cartoon Viking vibes, but we do have a Zamperli disco. Um, you know, I ride those because they're literally everywhere. We've also got a log flume with a double drop, which looks quite fun. And the weather is just about acceptable for it. So we'll probably do that too. Well, despite its impressive theming, unfortunately this disco is closed. So no funk today. Splash battle. Although well, nobody seems to be splashing each other. Dino Rapids! Well, we've kind of lapped the park now and seen everything there is to see. Still a few more rides to do though. There's a couple of water rides we're going to do shortly. But first up, we've got a big Intamin drop tower here. Anubis, not the same as it is at Plopsland Japan. However, I think the views up here will be good and probably quite a fierce drop too. This guy's saying hi and you should subscribe, otherwise he's going to put balloons in your mouth. Jesus. Oh. oh, that was powerful. <laughs> oh, well, House of Anubis drop tower was intense. That honestly felt like it braked far too late. Like you drop about 10 meters more than you think you're gonna drop. It's really, really mad. Some nice views up there too. Obviously looking one way, you get lovely views of the park and facing the other way, you've got to see the local surrounding countryside. But yeah, I was really impressed with that. That's a very powerful drop tower. Worth doing a couple of times. I think I need to sit down with something to eat though. That was, uh, whew. 
tunnel just randomly wandered into what appeared to be a shop and it came out into this sort of Toverland-esque indoor section. Isn't that quite nicely and cutely presented? cuteness overload through here we've got bees and bugs and crickets all over the place being all cute and offering plenty of nice little rides for younger riders so yeah it's all quite cool through here and this bucket's leaking everywhere so we're about to tackle some water rides now with dino splash and obviously dinosaur themed rapids ride could be quite cool Hopefully not literally, because it has started to cool down a little bit. When the sun was out, it was quite warm, but now it's feeling a little bit chilly, so we'll see how it goes. Now, the problem with stacking here is that if Mr. Triceratops lifts his tail, it could end very horribly for all of these guys. Still want a dinosaur animatronic. The theme seems quite random, because we've got dinosaurs just hanging around listening to classical music in a sort of country garden. It's all quite cool, though, and different. Well, here we are again. Is that moist? No slam. Oh! <laughs> I can see that coming up. I can as well. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. Hey! Ah! <laughs> Soggy body. That's back, or anything. Damp back. Oh, no. <laughs> <Hey>! Revenge. <laughs> Dino Splash was pretty good fun, got mildly wet but nothing too horrific. In terms of a layout, I'd say it was sort of a mid-level rapids. It was nothing crazy, but it was certainly better than a lot of the other rapids out there too. So having a bit of theming, can't go wrong with dinosaurs really, aren't they? Because dinosaurs are just good. Well, not content with getting a bit wet once, we're gonna do it again with Wiki 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 Splash. It's also got quite an intriguing double drop and what looks to be a backwards drop through some quite cool theme sections. So let's go get damp. There's the little drops that get you. I think my tactical decision to sit at the back has paid off. However, there is a backwards drop, so I may regret saying that. Oh, into the darkness we go. I just got splashed on my arm somehow going for lift hill. Right. That was bouncy. Alright, here we go. I think it's my turn to get wet. Oh, that was okay. I'm fine with that. These indoor sections are a bit of a missed opportunity. They could do some really cool theming things here, but no, they're going to... Oh, here we go. Spoke too soon. Well, your man's a bit damp, but it's okay. Sustained minimal damage and still got a fair bit of HP left, so... Um, I haven't run it past Joe yet, but I think he'll be up for a couple more rides on Expedition G-Force for the end of the day. Sounds like a plan, doesn't it? One thing to add on that though, I did feel as though there were quite a few dark sections in the indoor, which could have been 
improved upon. It was just like black tarpaulin up on the walls and then you'd suddenly get a bit of theming and go, oh, so there is theming, but they could have gone all out. You know, there's certain parks in Germany where those indoor sections would have been mind blowing. So a couple of missed opportunities there, but on the whole, solid log plane. Well, concluded the day with two more rides on Exposition G-Force. One at the front, one second from back. They also got an engineer having a look at what is that clanking sound on the lift hill. What's happening to the lift hill? It's clanking. It has definitely warmed up though. The, certainly the front row ride felt much quicker than it did in the front earlier. There's so much air time on there. Um, the S-Bend is really cool, some crazy, um, head choppers as you come underneath the support structure. It's a really good roller coaster. It is showing some signs of age. It's showing signs of a ride that's probably run through all season and it's now starting to generate a little bit of a rattle. I imagine then wheels will get changed in the off season, but on the whole, a great coaster. You can see why it's so well revered, why it's run the awards. It's just that obviously technology's moved on and now it feels a little bit stuck in the past, but that's not a bad thing. We still need the classics. So that's all from my day here at Holiday Park in Germany. And overall, I think it's been a nice park. It's obviously a step down from Europa Park where I was yesterday. Um, certainly operationally, there was some a lot of waiting at the start of the day to get our first ride on Exhibition G-Force, despite not a particularly long queue, but I do think this is a nice park. It's obviously a small park and that is reflected in its ride lineup. However, Expedition G-Force is a world-class roller coaster. I thought the sky screen was really good too. That drop tower behind me was fierce. Um, the water rides were okay. I think it's lacking maybe a couple of really good flat rides to kind of round it off. And of course we do have new coaster investments coming soon. So it's a bright future for Holiday Park. Um, if they can expand and grow on what they've already got, then the future does look quite promising. So let me know down below what you think of Holiday Park. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more, particularly from this German series, which is up on the screen now. That currently features vlogs from Hyde Park, Hansa Park, and the two days at Europa. So give them a watch if you would be so kind, and I shall catch you soon. Cheers, bye.